how would you like to learn the secrets of two Hama Club award winners on how they have built successful online businesses from almost nowhere to now running multiple seven and eight figure businesses by following the simple fundamentals of life. And let's see how they have used the powerful funnel systems, processes, automation and social media to help their business grow at a different pace. Let's dive into their journey to grasp the strategy, mindset, action plan of how they have done it from almost nowhere to the way up to seven figures. We are going to uncover and pick their brains of the top performing entrepreneurs on this show. How they have done it and how you can do it too. You are listening to The Nikhil Sai, the host and welcome to The Nikhil Sai Show. What's going on? What's going on everyone who is watching this show right now? First of all, everyone, welcome to The Nikhil Sai Show, which is hosted by me, The Nikhil Sai. And guess what's going on today? We are back with another amazing Two Karma Club interview. And guess who is actually joining the show today? This is a crazy story. She started as a sales representative in a Fortune 500 company. Then after working it six months, something like that, she didn't feel that it, it's for her because entrepreneurs really don't feel comfortable working nine to five. Right? Then she found a route of joining MLM company and she went all in and made her first thousand dollars within just a month. Then it just snowballed over and over and she loved the vibe and she scaled it where she actually made over eight figure in sales, building a powerful team of over thousand, thousand people under her. So now let's not welcome, let's not waste any time and welcome Michelle Cunningham, CEO at Simple MLM Secrets. Hey, Michelle. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me on, Nikhil. <laughs> Absolutely, Michelle. We're glad that you actually joined us on time. Thank you so much for being here today. Yeah. Appreciate it. Awesome. So, like, this is a crazy journey. Like, would you mind walking through? Like, can you tell us your backstory? Like, how did all of this craziness started? Yeah, I think, you know, a good backstory always kind of starts when you were born. And so it just, you know, I grew up in, in America, in Connecticut, and uh, my mom was a single mom. So my parents divorced when I was six years old. And so I come from very humble beginnings. And I feel like, like for a, a big part of my life, I always felt less than those around me. I was the poor kid. I had dirty sneakers. I couldn't afford apples. Like I just wanted to be rich, like kids that could afford big, fresh apples and Pantene shampoo. And so so much of my life was spent feeling less than those around me, but I, I actually look at that as a blessing because it made me motivated to work hard to make money so that I couldn't, that I could fit in, you know? And so ended up paying my way through college, graduated college, landed my dream job as a pharmaceutical sales rep working for a company selling drugs to doctors and like six months in or maybe like six days in, I was like, what am I doing with my life? This is terrible. And, um, and I ended up staying there for a few years, but my coworker's wife said to me, Hey, I sell for this other company. It's, we sell an MLM product. It's makeup and skincare. Do you want to go to this event with me? So I go to an event. There's a lady in the room claiming to make six figures. Another one's a millionaire. Another one's driving a free car. And I'm like 20, 23 years old. I'm like this, this is awesome. Right. So I go home and I tell my mom and my mom thinks it sounds too good to be true. She thinks it's a scam. So I don't sign up. And then a week later I signed up and, um, and I was too shy and too nervous to do anything with that company. Kind of this complex of feeling less than those around me. And I didn't do anything for the next six years. And so I stayed in safe corporate America and jobs that I sort of liked, but not really knowing that I, I wanted to do something bigger with my life. But I was like, I don't know what it could be. And it wasn't until I was 29 years old that I was like, you know what? I am fed up enough. And I think that's the, the thing. We all get to a point where we're just fed up enough. And I was fed up enough. I knew one day I wanted to have kids. And I said, this life of working for someone else is not going to give me the life that I dream about. So I'm going to take a step back. Like I was willing to let go of, I was making six figures at that point. I was willing to mm -hmm. let go of all of that to start over and build something that was going to grow exponentially beyond that. And so that's what I did at 29. I said, I'm all, I'm going to go all in with this network marketing company. Like, I'm not dumb. I think I can figure this out. I'm going to treat it like a real business. And sure enough, six months later, I was driving a free car and making $5,000 a month. And I had built a downline of 50 reps. And I was like, huh, maybe I'm onto something here. And so I continued to grow that. And, and while I was growing that, I also built a YouTube channel and shared my strategies with people which inadvertently grew into an online brand, which takes us to this <laughs> being here with you today. <laughs> wow. Well, oh, that's that that's pretty, pretty amazing, Michelle. That's that's really awesome, right? And it's it's really motivating to see someone like this, right? Like 
coming from a different background and now actually living your life. And that, that's really like you're an entrepreneur. Like we really see that in your blood, right? You, you can't fit in that nine to five. You just don't like it. Right? We don't feel alive when we're doing that, right? Even if that gives us six figures, even seven figures, it doesn't matter. It's, it's just not... It's just not built for that. That's that's pretty amazing. That's really motivational, Michelle. Thank you so much for amazing backstory. And Michelle, like one of the things you're really expert at is personal branding. And especially personal branding, a lot of companies, even people in network marketing, they're really confused with sort of how they can leverage their personal branding. And you're doing it so well that there is no one else in the marketplace who is doing better than you, especially in MLM business. We would love to hear like how to actually leverage personal brand in business. Yeah, you know, I think that for me, uh, my personal brand started not even me knowing I was building a brand. It started with, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. And the reason I started a YouTube channel was because people that I knew in my like life wouldn't know I had it. Like, that's how much of an introvert I am. Like, if I go on YouTube, no one will know I'm over there because they won't know unless I tell them. And so <laughs> I started over there. I started making videos and, and strangers started to find me online. And those strangers wow. built my self-esteem. I know this might sound crazy, but they were like, wow, this video was amazing. I love you, Michelle. And I'm like, really? Like, and I couldn't believe it. I literally couldn't believe that people liked me. And I was like, this, this is awesome. And so I said, well, my people that are following me, I got like 30 people now or whatever it was, I better make them another video. I got my friends out there. <laughs> and so it just started like that. I just kept putting out these free videos and helping people. And that then turned into, I took a marketing course and, and I paid a lot of money for this marketing course. And the one thing I learned from it, so you don't, it'll save you a lot of money, is build an email list. And I was like, I don't really even know. I'm not that techie. You're really techie. I'm not. I'm very like, I just like to make videos, right? So I was like, okay, I'm going to fi figure out on my cheesy Wix website how to collect emails. <laughs> So I didn't know what to do, but I figured out before the fold, put this little thing. And I think it was, I said something like, if you like my YouTubes and you want me to tell you every time I release a new one, just put your email here. And that yes. simple action changed my life forever because 12,000 people opted in to that email list thing, right? And I didn't even know what to do with these emails. Like sometimes I'd email them, sometimes I'd take six months off. Like I was a mess, like a total mess. And I share that because you can sometimes be a little clueless, but it's okay. Just collect emails and then you'll figure it out. And eventually you'll find some people that can help you like take it to the next level. But so I started collecting emails for six years. I didn't do anything consistently with them. And then I started to realize, gosh, I should put a pretty banner on my YouTube, right? So I, I eventually found someone on Fiverr. I'm like, oh, these people can design. And, and a few years ago, it was kind of hard to find, like, you didn't really know where to go. Now that we've got Canva, Canva mm -hmm. changed the game for all of us. Where you can go on Canva, you can design just about anything awesome. But if you're not good at design at all, you can go to Fiverr.com, find someone to make your YouTube banner, to match your Facebook banner, and get a cute little headshot. And I, I mean, I think those critical little things matter. And then the other piece of that is make sure that the colors are cohesive, right? Mine are pink. My world is pink. When I first started, my brand was like rainbow. It was like every color of the rainbow because I didn't know anything about branding. And then one day I was like, oh, a brand board. You mean I should have five colors? Got it. And so like I literally was like, okay, I like pink and I like light pink and I like dark pink and I like white and I like gray. And those became my colors. And so it's pretty easy because in all that I do, I'm like, is it pink? Okay, sweet. It fits the brand. So well, you don't really have to overthink it. Just pick a color you like, and then that's your brand. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow, Michelle. That's that's really amazing, right? Like, you started way before so that you can actually, do, you never even realize that you're actually building something that's going to be this huge, right? Yeah. And the best part is you, you, you didn't even have a hook or a story. You just say, like, hey, if you like my YouTube videos, like, enter your email and you build a list, which is freaking amazing. And I, I definitely agree on the point being said, Michelle, which is, like, build email list no matter what no matter the situation like those that that exact asset is going to make you fortunes if you just use that the right way so just make sure no matter where you are in your business just make sure to collect potential clients email addresses because that's going to compound at a different level Absolutely. Pretty, pretty amazing stuff michelle so let's get to the next question michelle this is pretty amazing so like a lot of mlm business owners like even 2021 they'd be like ah oh, there's no marketing events happening like how can i grow i go and try to sell my neighbors knocking door to doors like 
like they're still traditional, right? Would you mind like you're ML and King in my opinion? So would you mind telling me more about like what kind of role does digital marketing plays when it comes to growing an MLM business, especially? Yeah, you know what was interesting about my journey is that I was a home party rep, which meant I went to people's homes and I showed them my goods. They tried it on and then they'd buy it from me. But in doing that, I was taking time away from my kids who at the time were three and, and a, a baby, right? They were little and I hated leaving, I did. And I would, I would go and I'd do and I'd be gone for two or three hours. And I was like, gosh, I wish I could generate business online. And what is so interesting about my YouTube channel where I was just going, I was posting these videos to help people that were doing what I was doing. I was just sharing like, here's what I said at my party that made me sell 300. Those little videos, what I didn't know is it was attracting new people to me. And th those people were following my videos and then they would say things like, I've been following you for the last six months and I like you and the company I'm with, I don't think it's as easy. I want to join your team. And so like it, it sometimes people think they have to like reel people in. But what I was doing that I didn't know that I was doing was what I call friendship marketing, where I was just like being a friend and just like, hey, friend, if you want some helpful information, here it is. And those people felt like they were my friend. And, and today they are my friends. Like when they're live, I'm like, friends, hey friends. And so my my friends then reached out to me. And I, I'll never forget a girl reached out to me from Florida. And she said, hey, I'm a single girl. I work, I own a, a cooking company. I'm just tired of it. What you do looks easier. I'm gonna join your team and I'm gonna be a rock star. And I'm like, okay. Like on the phone, I was like, yeah, right. Like no one is a rock star, but she found me because of my YouTube channel. But either way, this girl joined my team. She added over 700 people to my downline, did millions and millions of dollars in revenue. And the secret sauce was that because I consistently put out YouTube videos, she was watching me and analyzing and then deciding she liked me. And so if you really want to open up your personality for people to find you, start serving. And, and I think there's a book, it's called Jab, Jab, Right Hook, but it basically just says like, just serve, just love, just give. Like I give so many awesome things out and I didn't, I just did that because I like, like to, <laughs> but I didn't know that that was actually going to attract people to my business. People would reach out to me and want to buy products from me. And it's, it's super effective. So for me, I'm, I'm a, I love YouTube and I love Facebook live and that's where I hang out. I know there's a lot of different platforms, but I think at the end of the day, the platform that you give the most attention to is the one that will grow the biggest. And so my YouTube platform has grown the biggest because I've given it the most attention. Wow, wow. That, that's a real great action plan for anyone who's just trying to set up digital marketing for their business. That's that's amazing, Michelle. Thank you so much yeah, for that. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's get into the next week question, Michelle. Like, We've seen MLM business, especially people who are joining MLM, right? They just be like, after they see an event or a video, they'll be like, yeah, I'm going to make a million dollars. I'm going to join 10,000 people under me. But then later a week, they'll be like, uh, maybe this isn't working. Maybe this is not for me. Like they doubt themselves and they just go into that kind of implode nature, right? So like, and again, it comes down to like building an effective team who actually runs your business for you, right? That's what network marketing is about, right? So would you mind giving us your two cents on how to build a team who runs with the same vision as you do, like this motivated, hyperactive, no matter what, just go and show up kind of team? Yeah, I think, you know, for me, like sometimes I recruited people that were super duper motivated and sometimes I didn't. And when I look at the people that joined me that were super duper motivated, they were the people that when I presented my story, I was I was really inspirational. Like I inspired them and I gave them hope. And, and when someone joins your team that's inspired and they have hope, they act differently. They behave differently. They, they become intrinsically motivated to want to do so many things. And so there was a period in my business where I, I didn't really share a motivational story, partially because I felt like I didn't have one at that point or because I was tired. Or, you know, it just wasn't good. But when I changed my story to be like robust and really inspirational and it had a lot of emotion, those people joined my team and they were like, girl, you inspired me. Like, I'm ready to do this because I'm so inspired. And it was, so it was interesting because they were ready to take off with it. And so, you know, I, I would say to anybody that feels like they're not bringing on inspired people is change your story 
And it doesn't matter what level you're at right now, make your story super inspirational. It could be that you are leading one of the fastest growing teams in the area. You could have two people on your team, right? But you are leading one of the fastest growing teams on the, in the area and you are going to the top and you're taking people with you that are highly motivated that wanna do this, but this is gonna change people's lives. When you get super fired up, you bring on super fired up people and you also get rid of people that are not fired up. <laughs> and so I think that, that that really matters. Your energy is gonna feed your team. And with that being said, I still brought on some people that were like, ooh, I'm inspired. And then they were not inspired the next day and they, they drifted away. It's not like everyone that joined your team is gonna be a rock star, but you gotta go out and just shuffle through until you find the people that really get the vision like you do. True, so true, nice. Michelle. I think I think that's that's really amazing. Like you just need a handful of people who are just as good as you, so that they will run yeah. for you. And as you just mentioned, like like your prospects or maybe your potential team is less excited than you are. Like if you're just like that guy who's just saying like, "Hey, go through my link, buy my stuff." Like, nobody does that. You should always be telling great stories. I think that that story thing it really attracted me. Like it's it's gonna give a lot of business owners popping up multiple ideas that your story is what sells. Right, like, why do you think Apple is so big and Amazon is so big? That's because they are very great at storytelling and offering their products and services as well. That's that's pretty amazing, Michelle. So, let's get into the next quick question. I love the vibe on this podcast today. So, yeah, let's get into the next quick question, Michelle. Like, you've seen MLM business owners, especially the beginners, they just do crazy stuff that we couldn't resist ourselves to stop them or laugh at them, right? And would you mind telling us like the three common mistakes every small uh, or be beginner MLM business owner makes? Yeah. I mean, I think it's a, it's a few things because for me, I, I struggled in MLM for six years before I got started. So I'll tell you the mistakes I made. Number one, I was too scared to approach people, right? So I did everything but approach people, which is the one thing that's the scary thing to do, but that was the thing that was going to move my business forward. So I wasted my time organizing my inventory, laminating ideas, searching Google for ideas on how to talk to people. Like I did <laughs> everything to avoid talking to humans for six solid years. So like, don't do that. That was a bad use of time. Okay. That's number one. Number two is they, they watch other people so closely that they start comparing. And I think that at the end of the day, you got to be your own train on your own track. You don't look to the left, don't look to the, the right, because when you compare is to despair. It just doesn't bring you any good energy. So that's the number two thing that I see happening. And the third thing is that, gosh, there's a lot of different ones I'd say here, but I would probably say that you just need to take action. Like I didn't take action. Number one, I, I was taking zero action. But when I finally decided to just ask that first person, and, and I finally got some like traction, uh, things started to happen. But, but for me, like I, because I'm shy and an introvert and I don't like to approach strangers, I had to figure out how to do it in my own way. So take action that works for you at your self-esteem level. People would say to me, you can't build this business by Facebook. You can't build this business with text message. And I'm like, well, watch me. And so I actually <laughs> earned a top level car in our company, never picking up the phone, never approaching strangers. It became kind of my thing. I texted oh. people. So I figured out how could I get someone's phone number? So I put little jars around my town. I was doing some crazy stuff, right? I also figured out how to do this online, but I got people to give me their phone number so I could then text them. And now you can do it with Facebook. You can do so many different things, but uh, six years ago, it was a bit different. So, um, so that stuff really, it worked super, super well. And, uh, and so find something that works for you at your confidence level that you're currently at. Wow, Michelle, those are great learnings, especially come from the mistakes you have made. I think that's going to cut short a lot of learning curve for all of the viewers on this podcast. Thank you so much for sharing them. Pretty amazing stuff. And let's get into the next week question, Michelle. Like, again, when it comes to MLM business, we see nerds talking about like, oh, like just hearing the keyword like MLM to be like, oh, that's a scam or that's just like a lot of hype and a lot of other things. Right. So I would love to hear, like, what do you think as your one of the top guys in the MLM space, like what are the major myths and the truths of MLM businesses in 2021 specifically, because you see a lot of stuff happening back then. But yeah, what about right now? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think people that are not in the industry, they just assume it's a scam. I mean, that, that was my mom. And so, you know, it, a scam, it, it doesn't exist for 50 years or 60 years. If it's truly a scam, it gets shut down. Right. And so, you know, and I always said that when people are like, I don't want to join your company, I think it's a scam. 
I'm like, well, we've been around since, you know, it was a company from the 1960s. I'm like, been around that long. So it was a scam. It was going to get shut down. So, um, so I think, you know, that that's a big one, but, but it's like when you actually start to follow people that have changed their entire life, like the industry changed my entire life. Like it gave me confidence and I learned so much in the industry. And, you know, the reason I got involved in the industry was because I read a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And in that book, it's a great book. If you haven't read it, I recommend it to every entrepreneur. But he said, there's three ways you can make money. You can start your own small business. You can invest in real estate. Or if you don't have a lot of money or capital, start in network marketing and learn from there. And truly, network marketing teaches you with very little investment how to run a business, how to talk to customers, how to manage customers, how to, how to deal with inventory. Like It taught me all the basics of business. So then I got this like superpower that made me believe, well, I could do this with any other business. And so it's a great starting ground for anybody. And, and that's that's the truth about MLM is it's one of the best places for anybody to start who feels like, I don't know where to start. I would say pick an MLM company, direct sales company, a network marketing company. They all call themselves different things, but find one and, and dive right in and learn it and uh, it'll change your life. It's pretty crazy. Uh, that's that's one hundred percent true, Michelle. I think the perspective is perfect here, right? And again, like it's the perspective of where you are actually, like who you're trying to attract, right? If you're trying to like attract someone who's already making a million dollar months to join an MLM, like that doesn't make any sense until or unless they're in the same niche with a huge audience. But if you're talking about like a teenager who who has no clue what to do, who's very introverted, just like how you started, I think I personally seen a lot of my friends like who were actually nowhere, they were just like that silent guy in the class to actually being able to speak and go talk to the strangers and, you know, start selling the products, even though they made money or not, that just, that's just something it depends on their performance and stuff like that, but they get the confidence level to build up a next level of team management skills, sales skills, and the kind of ability to open up their mind. And the best part, I think in the MLM business is you have access to the most beginners, to the people who are actually making millions of dollars. In, in on the same stage, right? I think that's a great place to network together. That that's why it's called like network marketing, right? It's pretty amazing stuff. So I think that's definitely recommended for someone who's just getting started. Thank you so much, Michelle. That that was just on point. So Michelle, like, let's get into the next quick question. Like, you get so much stuff done, especially when it comes to content. You know, growing your business, selling courses and stuff like that, which is pretty awesome, right? We would love to hear what kind of tools and uh, you know management softwares you use to manage your productivity, stuff like that, in, internally in your team and your clients. Yeah, you know, I'm a I'm a Google Drive girl. And so we manage a ton in Google Drive. Like I know that people have Trello and they do all these fancy things. I'm like, how can we do this in Google? So we actually have a Google Drive where, you know, when I film a video, I was just right before I came live, I was I was filming videos on this phone with my little microphone. And I take the video, edit it in here, and I would shoot it right into the drive folder for my Facebook ad team to grab and for my funnel guy to add to my sales page. And so we park so many things inside of there, even like content that we're putting out. I did a video for free today that we're going to make into a YouTube. But the, those, we organize them in a Google Doc. <laughs> when was it released? When can we reuse it? Here's the thumbnail for it. Here's the link to it. Here's the freebie that went with it. And so I know people use a lot of really fancy things, but I'm a Google Drive girl. And I love it because it's easy and I can share it with my team and <laughs> we love it. So yeah, that's that, that's pretty amazing, Michelle. And yeah, I think like keeping things simple on a straight platter, I think that's going to eliminate a lot of confusion because we've seen teams who use seven different softwares to communicate and it's yeah. like just crazy to have all of the things ahead, right? And I think that's going to make it so simple. And people who are claiming that they don't have the right resources or paid tools to run your business, check out Michelle, right? She's using <laughs> Google Drive. It's free to use. No excuse, free. please. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's that's Mine's awesome. always the non-techy version. That's how I roll in the keel. You're like really techy and I'm like really not. And so I'm like, what's the simplest way we can do that to like generate the most revenue? Okay, cool. Google Drive. Yeah, <laughs> true, true. That, that's amazing. Yeah, it's not about like being techy or not, but it's more about like how can you make things so simple so that anyone yeah. and everyone can understand and take the next step, which is just formulating the funnel, right? That's that's pretty amazing, yeah. Michelle. That's awesome. So yeah, the all everything we're trying to do is to just to make the life simpler, easier, 
and without any tedious procedures. That's that's amazing, Michelle. So let's get to the next quick question, Michelle. Like you've been from nowhere working in a job and struggling in MLM business to now actually helping tens of thousands of people learn how they can start and build their own businesses, which is freaking awesome. We would love to know more about like your daily routines or any kind of rituals you personally follow for your success. Yeah, so the daily routine is basically we get up at 8.30. I've got two kids, they're five and they're nine. So we get up at 8.30, I drive them to school, they get to school by 9.15, and then I come home. Today, I went on a three-mile run. I'm a workout girl, so I gotta get in at least 30 minutes to an hour a day. Did my three-mile run, got ready, threw on makeup, and then depending on if I'm editing videos or filming, like today's a filming day, so I threw on a bunch of makeup, filmed my videos, and then some days, the next day is an edit day where I don't have to put on makeup and I'm just editing videos and putting them out there. And I'm also always thinking creatively, from like 11 a.m. until about 4.30 p.m. when the kids come home, that's my window to crank out work. So I work as much as I possibly can to crank out videos, content, whatever I need, uh, come up with new ideas for stuff so that when I get them off the bus at 4.30, then I'm back into mom mode. So like today, we're meeting some other moms at a snow cone ice cream truck down the road at 5.30. <laughs> and uh, you know, sometimes you know, I will do a little bit of night work, but Lately, I really haven't had to do night work because I've got a bunch of stuff that's running on automation. We've got automated webinars now, automated programs, Facebook ads running. So it's just like so much of what I do. And, and I've told my team is like, I can't be that present. I only have about five hours I can work Monday through Friday. And so I need to be able to create stuff that runs on autom like automatically. And so that's wow. that's really my business model is not. I don't, I don't have one-on-one -on -one clients. Just everything I do is just online courses that run automatically. And that's wow, what I need. Wow. That, yeah. that's, that's exciting, Michelle. And, and that's just like a dream come true for a lot of people that want their business to stand and run on autopilot, which are doing pretty amazing, right? That's, that's crazy. And yeah, like yeah. the modes are switching. Like we, we, we need to sell you for that thing, like getting into a creative genius mode where you're actually building your business to make it a bigger and create more impact at the same time taking care of your children just switching the modes and making our time which is freaking amazing that's that's a great dedication love it love it michelle thank yeah. you so much so let's get to the next quick question michelle you've been doing, making a large shift one year while you're actually starting your career like joining sales jobs to actually multiple corporate america jobs and actually turning into network marketing going online scaling business now selling automated stuff which is freaking amazing like if you would like to speak to a 20 year old you what would be your number one suggestion or if you want to talk to someone who's just getting started what would be your number one suggestion for them yeah i think it's a great question i think that um successful people feel the fear and do it anyway and and i remember hearing that for the first time when i was 29 and i was like oh really like i didn't know that like i really thought that successful people came from wealthy families had confident parents grew up confident had big houses and they were just like lucky. And, and when you grow up on the poor side of things, you're like, well, I'm just poor and like I'm insecure. And so I didn't realize that you could just, you could feel fear and you could do it anyway. And so when I started to feel that fear, I would do things anyway. I would send that text message or I'd send another text message or I'd book another person. And in each, each time I did that, I chipped away a little bit of that introverted shell. And I kind of like threw it aside, almost like a chocolate bunny, you know? I just started to chip away at that fragile parts of myself and it made me more confident. And so that's what I would say to a, a 20 year old is just like do those things that are like really uncomfortable. And and I'm the biggest introvert of them all. Like I did, would not approach anyone in my 20s. I, I didn't, I actually didn't. So I would say, just do it. Do those things that feel uncomfortable and it will change the game for you. And I, and I watched, I'm friends with some 20, 20 year olds now. And I'm like, man, you are so ahead of me. You know, I'm 41 now. And so I just, it took me a little bit of time to finally like get the guts to do it. But it was baby steps. I think you eat an elephant one bite at a time. So that's how I did it. And that's what I recommend. Wow. that That's, that's really true, Michelle, right? They just need to cut the whole pizza into small pieces so that they can take it slowly because you can't yeah. eat it all at a time. So that small initial actions can actually compound to an entire lifestyle change and the mindset change, which is going to shift their business and their situation in their life, which is freaking awesome. So let's yeah. get to the next week question, Michelle. Like, what are your life's biggest achievements so far and any next bigger goals? Yeah, so this was really exciting for me to get that little award. <laughs> like I was like, oh man, I'd love to get that. And I actually just looked at my numbers and I think I've already hit 2 million. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna get a second one, which is really exciting. <laughs> so 
That's um, amazing. Yeah, and we just I part. started, thank you so much. I, I started just two years ago in the internet marketing world and like learning it and figuring it out. And it's so exciting and it's so cool when you can take your knowledge and you can help people and they tell you how helpful it is and you change their business and your life, yet you get paid really handsomely for it. And like, it's addicting, it's inciting. Like, I love it so much. And so, um, so yeah, I would say the 2 million in revenue is definitely like, whoa, like I never thought I could do that. That's awesome. Now I'm like, okay, how do we do 10 million? And so, um, so <laughs> that's, yeah, that's kind of my next goal is like, all right, I want to get the one that's like got all the circles in it. So uh, I want to get that award. From That's the hundred million award. <laughs> yeah, I want That's to. That's amazing. Yeah, you could have me on again. I'll be like, "Whoa, I did it! Look at Nikhil, I got Michelle, the award." Michelle, definitely. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty excited to have you again, Michelle. So yeah, we will definitely do another podcast when you have that. 10x award and once we hit that like the circles award like the 2ccc that would be so great to have you on for sure we will mark it down for sure that's amazing michelle excited excited to see your progress and and love the impact kind of what you're doing to all the girls who have that low self-esteem trying to use snapchat and instagram and actually now trying to build their own business which is freaking awesome right you're, you're really creating a positive impact on them that's what i love more than the revenue thing which is amazing so let's get to the next quick question michelle what was the biggest mistake in your life so far especially Hmm. It's a good question. I mean, I think, I think it, it, it probably just stems back from my childhood is just believing that I, I didn't have power within me, right? For so long, I played the story that I was shy and I'm introverted and I can't do this because of that. But you can rewrite that story. You know, even we can rewrite the story of I'm unorganized. You know, I spoke that to myself for so long and I'm like, how about just get organized and stop saying that? Like, in anything that we do, you can rewrite the story, just change your thinking in your brain. And so um, so that's what I would say is I lived in the shy mode for way too long. And like, I'm not shy. I was just insecure. <laughs> like, we're not you're not shy. You're insecure. Get into action and you can change the person that you are and how you show up. Wow. Wow, Michelle. I think that's that sounds spot. Like definitely a lot of people, they still have the opportunity to rewrite their complete story. And ju it's just like. I believe you're not organized earlier. Now we just told yourself that, hey, I'm organized. And that's when you became super organized, right? And now you teach people how to be organized, which is freaking awesome. <laughs> it's just the story you tell yourself so that you can actually become that person. And once you become that person, you just live the life, right? Which is freaking amazing. So yeah. don't don't just claim for things which are happening in life. It's just what you want. That's what happens really. So just, just manifest it and work on it. It's gonna happen for sure. That's, yeah. that's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing, Michelle. So we would love to hear like, you've been so long in the journey of business from different, different places, right? Would you like to tell like any main inspiration for all the success you had and any people involved in your journey? Yeah, you know, I, I write about this in, in my book. I actually wrote a book last year. Um, it, it's called Do It Anyway, Girl. And I talk about my my mentor um, in this book, but she her name is Maggie. And she was the person who in 2009, when I was stuck and I wanted to make network marketing work, I reached out to Maggie. And I tell the whole story in here of like how I met her and wow. what she said to me and how she taught me to feel the fear and do it anyway. And she taught me to just send a text and do this and just take action. And she is the one who changed my life forever. And so, um, and, and I said, if I ever figure this industry out, like I, I, because I was stuck for six years and it was a painful six years and I felt like I'm never gonna make this work, but I was dreaming about it for six years. I said, if I ever do make this work, I'm gonna make sure I teach everybody. I'm gonna show them exactly what I did. And so I actually wrote this yeah. book because people will say to me, well, what did you say? And I'm like, oh, I wrote it, I put it all in here. And then like what Maggie told me to say, I did it. And then, so I, I give everything in here because I felt like I was stuck for so long because people would, I go to company events and they'd be on the stage and they'd be like, you can do it. I'm like, do what? Like, what are you, <laughs> what are you saying? Like, what's your magic script? How are you talking to people? I need to know, how you ask someone for their credit card. Like I needed, I couldn't even figure those little pieces out to like finish closing the sale. And I needed someone to give me a step-by-step -step system. And so that's just the stuff I always train on is, is that because um, Maggie taught me that stuff. And so I give back and share with others. Wow. Wow. That, that's amazing, Michelle. Like I would love to drop a link in the podcast description so that someone else can go and grab that Do It Anyway Girl book. I think that's really exciting, right? Like, and I know the best part is you're being Maggie for a million people right now, right? Like <laughs> that's, that's the best part of the story, which is, which is freaking amazing, Michelle. Way to go. Love it. Love the vibe. So Maggie, 
I mean, sorry, Michelle. So this is amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. All the information you're sharing here about the personal brand, building up confidence and actually showing up, do it anyway, which is freaking amazing. So where can our audience find you mentoring? So if you go to uh, michellecunningham.com, that's just my name, that'll give you my website and then you'll be able to access a lot of my free trainings, get access to my YouTube channel. I go live there or not live, post Maybe. videos there once a week. And so that, yeah, that's your biggest place. Michellecunningham.com will lead you that's, in lots of directions. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. And you've got some killer resources for all the people who need to kickstart and bootstrap their business, which is freaking awesome. So guys, just make sure to check the website, which will be in the podcast description and you'll never regret it, right? It's just a chance to go and take action and just do it anyway, because you want to be there one day, right? For sure. So Michelle, that was just amazing, amazing, well spent 35 minutes so far. So any last one before we conclude the entire podcast session today? Yeah, it's just this one thing that someone taught me that really changed the game for me. It's one very simple saying. And that is what other people think about me is none of my business. And so I'd remind that to all of you, anybody who's holding back because you're worried about what someone else thinks, what other people think about you is none of your business. You go out and do it anyway, and it will completely and dramatically change your life. Wow, that's that's just an amazing killer on spot suggestion, right? And we see like 90% of the people who have the potential to do something, but they don't do it. It's just because like, oh, what do my parents think or my friends think or my neighbors think? And it's, it's just all crap because they're not going to pay your bills, right? Just go and do your stuff, right? Just go and be there. Do it anyway, right? That's that's pretty yeah. amazing, Michelle. Love it, love it. Thank you so much for the amazing opportunity, Michelle. And we're definitely looking forward to have you once again uh, when you actually hit the X award or when you actually have the two comma club, right? Way to go, right? <laughs> and definitely manifesting to see you with all those four, four discs, which is the two CCC, pretty amazing stuff, right? Definitely excited, Michelle, and to see you along the journey and hope you'll be impacting 10 million girls and people to get into business and actually start their own life and be whatever they want, which is freaking awesome. And hopefully guys who watched the podcast episode so far, I hope you love the enjoy session and hope you enjoyed all the podcast today and hope you got some value out of it. The story is just inspirational. And the end of the day, you just need to go and do it, right? Do it anyway, right? And stay tuned for the next podcast, guys. And this is freaking amazing. We'll be excited and looking forward for the next podcast. Have a great day, guys. Peace out. Bye, Michelle. Bye.